Hopefully, you will learn Fermat's little theorem today. And it's not that simple or it's not that tough. So what I want you to realize and remember that there is no easy way or a magic trick to learn. In fact, there are no tricks whatsoever. So it just really depends upon your understanding capabilities. So let's get started with today's statement of Fermat's little theorem. So here, the statement states that if P is a prime and A is an integer such that P does not divide A, then A power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. So here what is given? P is a prime number and A is an integer such that P does not divide A. The case is that P does not divide A. Then A power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. See here, P is given as a prime number. It's most important thing. And P does not divide this A. Then A power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. See here, in the proof, let us consider the first P minus 1 positive multiples of A. So, if you take A, so we have to consider the first P minus A multiples of A. So, that is 1A, 2A, 3A and so on. These are all the multiples till P minus 1 into A. Since P does not divide A. It, so, it's given from the statement that P does not divide A. Since P does not divide A, no two of the above set of the integers are congruent modulo P or congruent modulo 0. See here, since these two does not divide each other and therefore no two of the above set of integers, among these two, no two sets of above integers are congruent modulo P or congruent to 0. Clear? Suppose, let us take two among them. So, let us take two multiples of A and we consider its a uh, congruent modulo P. So let UA is congruent to VA modulo P where U and V belongs to the integers 1, 2, 3. So on till P minus 1 and U is not equal to V. Here U is not equal to V. So here UA is congruent to VA mod P. And see if you see if you multiply both if you subtract both sides with VA that is UA minus VA congruent to, this is VA minus VA modulo P. Then see here, we can take A common from this. Then this will be U minus A into V congruent to. So if you cancel uh, these two or subtract these two, this will be 0 mod P. Then clearly, according to our congruence definition, P divides U minus V into A. So this is P divides U minus V. P divides U minus V into A. Since, see here, P is a prime number and it is given that P does not divide A. Since P is a prime number, either P divides U minus V or A. So, here is the two conditions that P divides. Since P is a prime number, P divides either U minus V or P divides A. Since P divides U minus V into A. So, P should divide either U minus V or A. A. See here, U and V are the numbers between 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, P minus 1. So, U is less than P and V is also less than P. So, their difference is also less than P and therefore, it is impossible that P doesn't divide the difference U minus V. Also, by the hypothesis, we have P does not divide A. So, there is no possibility of dividing. So, here if you see, P divides, this is U minus V into A. So, from the hypothesis that P doesn't divide A, so if you check with U minus V, so U is less than P and V is less than P, their difference is also less than P and therefore P doesn't divide U minus V. There is no possibility at all and therefore, hence, our assumption that, see here, what we assume that, no two, see here, no, no two of the above set of the integers are congruent to modulo P or congruent to modulo 0. Now, we say that, so, as this is not possible, we say that UA is congruent to VA modulo P and UA is congruent to 0 mod P. See, after taking no, two sets of above integers are congruent to modulo P or congruent to 0. Therefore, the above set of integers must be congruent to so, all the integers here, 1, 2, 3 and so on, P minus 1, taken in some order. So, multiplying all the congruences together, we get 
See here, multiples of a, a, 2a, 3a and so on, p minus 1 into a is congruent to 1, 2, 3 and so on, p minus 1 into mod p. See here, how many a's are there? So, here is an a, here is an a, how many a's are there? p minus 1 a's. Therefore, a power p minus 1, if you take a common among all these, this will be 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into and so on, p minus 1. And here also this is 1, 2, 3 and so on, p minus 1, modulo p. So this will be p minus 1 factorial and this is also p minus 1 factorial. So from both sides, if you divide the p minus 1 factorial, then what remains here? a power p minus 1. So if you divide, so this will be, or else these two will be cancelled, a power p minus 1 congruent to 1 mod p. So or else if this can be written as a power p by a, and if you multiply both sides with a, then we'll be getting a power p, a power p congruent to, this is a mod p. So, hence this is Fermat's little theorem. So, this is the proof of uh, the Fermat's little theorem. This is also so simple if you understand. First of all, we have to consider all the p minus 1, p minus 1 multiples of a, that is 1a, 2a, 3a and so on, p minus 1, p minus uh, p minus 1 into a multiples since p does not divide a from the question itself it said it is said that p doesn't divide a since no two of the above set of the integers are congruent to modulo p or congruent to 0 so let us take two among them and ua is congruent to va mod p and if you subtract both sides with va and we got p divides u minus v into a so since p doesn't divides a and p also doesn't divide this is a small difference u minus v and therefore this is not possible therefore two of the above sets of integers are congruent to modulo p or congruent to zero therefore these two happens and therefore the above set of integers must be congruent to the integers the given integers 1 2 3 4 and so on p minus 1 therefore all the multiples of a till p minus 1 is congruent to the given integers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, p minus 1 mod p. And therefore, if you take a common, so this will be a power p minus 1 and this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, p minus 1 and here also 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on till p minus 1 modulo p. So, this is p minus 1 factorial and this is p minus 1 factorial. If you divide both sides with p minus 1 factorial, here is this one and this can be written as a power p by a and if you multiply both sides with a and a power p is congruent to a mod p and hence the Fermat's Little Theorem. So, in my next video, I'll be posting all the problems related to this Fermat's Little Theorem. This is very, very important and if you understand this one, definitely pass it on to your friends and my next video will be on the problems related to the Fermat's theorem and my very next video will be on Wilson theorem and therefore these are all uh, the most important theorems from the number theory and definitely these are all the sure shot theorems and please practice and go through the playlist so many videos are uploaded for you please practice and uh, your preparation will be damn easy if you go through those and if you really like this channel please subscribe raise your thumb and keep in touch thank you so much for watching and staying till the end